everyone welcome to explore electronics in this video let's understand the various loops that we have in c programming we have while loop do while loop for loop and nested for loop so let's begin and understand how to use these loops in c programming while loop is a pre test loop that means we have a condition which will be checked in order to enter this loop that's why it is also called as entry control loop that means the entry to this loop will be controlled with a condition so this is the syntax to write the while loop we have while keyword and inside this brackets we will be writing the condition once this condition is satisfied we will enter this loop and the statement block will be executed this is the flowchart for while loop the condition will be checked and if it is true the body of the loop will be executed and after the execution of the body the control will be given back to the condition so this is the loop that is created until this condition is true once the condition comes out to be false then then the control will come out of this block and it will end we have an example to print the sum of 10 numbers so uh, we are having a variable in which we are saying it is equal to 10 and this i is the counter and we are initializing it to 1 and we have sum so initially the value of sum is 0 now in the while loop we are checking if the counter that means we need to count the digit 10 times in order to find the sum of 10 numbers so the, the counter initially will be 1 and we are checking if this counter is less than or equal to 10 so in the first case the counter value is 1 and it is satisfying this while condition and it enters here and the sum initially the sum value is 0 now sum is will be added with the counter value so what we are doing we are adding 0 plus 1 now what the sum is having is 1 now again we are incrementing our counter by 1 so in the second iteration our counter is 2 so it is coming here and checking if 2 is less than or equal to 10 and if it is and it is satisfying so it is entering here and now the sum will be incremented by 2 because i value is now 2 So one plus two will be three. Now the sum is having value three. Likewise, at the end of the execution, the sum will be having the total sum of all ten numbers. So this is how we can find the sum of ten numbers by using while loop. Now we have do while loop. Unlike while loop, this do while loop is a post test loop. That means the test condition will be checked at the end of this loop. at least this loop will be executed for once before we check for the condition so we call it as exit control loop we have two keywords to write this one is do and while so if we see the syntax first we will be writing do keyword and inside that the statement block to be executed and at after the statement block we are going to write our while condition once this con once this loop will be executed and then it will be checking the condition in if this condition is satisfying then again this will be executed so in this case the do while loop will always be executed at least once so this is the flow chart of the do while loop we have do and the body of the loop and we are going to check the while condition if it is true then again we will go to do and execute the body of the loop if it is false we will directly come out that means this loop will be executed only once if the condition is not satisfied and we have an example the previous example which we had to find the sum of 10 numbers the same example we can write using do while loop in this way so the first time we are writing sum is equal to sum plus i and then we are incrementing i by 1 now we are checking if i is less than or equal to n so it is going to print the sum so here it says before the loop execution n was 10 and sum was initialized to 0 and the counter i is 1 in the first round what happens 10 n is 10 sum will be 1 because 0 plus 1 in the first iteration so sum is now 1 at the end of this first iteration sum will be having 1 and i is incremented by 1 so i is having 2 now similarly in the second round sum will be incremented to 3 because we already had sum as 1 now i is 2 so we are adding these two we are getting 3 so i plus sum that is 1 plus 2 will be 3 now again we are incrementing i by 1 uh, in the first round it was 2 and we are incrementing by 1 now it is 3 so similarly it will be executed till 10th round 
at the end of the 10th round we will be having sum of 10 numbers. Now let's understand what is for loop. This is another pretest loop that means we are going to test before entering into this loop. So we have the test condition written here and if that is satisfying only then we will enter the loop. This is also called as entry controlled loop and in for loop we have a concise loop control structure that is we have the initialization, test condition and updation. This is the flowchart of for loop. We have the for loop and inside this for loop we are having the initialization and we are checking for the condition and then after executing the body of the for loop increment operation takes place and then if the condition is satisfied it is again going to the for loop and checking for the condition and executing once this for loop condition is not satisfied then it will come out of this for loop so for example here we have for loop this is our initialization and then we are checking for the condition and this is our increment or updation in the first iteration it is going to initialize i as 1 that is our counter value is 1 and now it is going to enter this loop since 1 is less than 10. Now the sum value is 0 then it will be added with i value that is 1. Now again it is going to this for loop and it is now the i value has incremented. So after execution of the statements this increment operation takes place. Now i is having 2. 2 is again less than 10 and it is going to enter here and sum will be added with the 2. Likewise it will be executed 10 times that is till i becomes 10 again 10 is equal to n so that condition is also going to be satisfied here since we have written less than or equal to and now it will be executing the 10th time after 10 the i is now incremented to 11 so now what happens when it comes to for loop it is checking if i is less than or equal to n which is not equal to so it will be coming out of this and executing this print statement nested for loop. In the situations where we need to write the for loop inside a for loop we can use this nested for loop. So this is the structure of a nested for loop. We have an outer for loop and after checking this condition we will be going to the inner for loop and this inner for loop will be executed until the condition that we written here will be satisfied. Then again after once the condition here becomes false then it will go to the outer for loop. So here the increment operation takes place after this condition of the inner for loop becomes false then the increment operation of the outer for loop takes place then it is going to check for the condition. Again if it is true it will come to the inner for loop and this inner for loop will be again executed for the number of times this condition is going to satisfy. So for every increment of the outer for loop the inner for loop will be executed the number of times it is satisfying this condition. So here we have an example where we have initialized rows equal to 1 and if rows is equal to or less than 4 we are entering this outer for loop. So this is the outer for loop and this is inner for loop. Now rows is initialized to 1 and it is less than equal to 4 so this condition is satisfied and it is coming inside the for loop. Now we have one more for loop inside this and where we are checking for columns and we have set the columns value to initially 1. Now it is satisfying this condition right column is 1 and it is less than equal to 3. It is coming inside and printing the row value of rows and columns. So in the first iteration the value of row is 1, row is 1 and column is 1. Now the inner for loop will be executed until this condition becomes false. So now column will be incremented by 1 and it is going to check again. Now column value is 2 so it is going to satisfy this condition and it enters and prints again the rows and column value. Again in the second iteration of the inner for loop we are having row as 1 with column 2. Now again this is going to get incremented by 1 and it is checking for the condition. Now column value is 3. It is satisfying this condition and it is going to print. But our row value still remains the same because in the outer for loop we are still in the first iteration. Now in the second iteration when will we go to the second iteration of the outer loop is when the inner loop condition is false. Now after this is executed that is once the column value is 3 now it is incremented to 4. Now it is not going to satisfy this condition. So what happens is it will come out of this inner for loop and it is going back to the outer for loop. Now the row value is incremented by 1 that is row is having 2 in the second iteration of the outer for loop. Now it is going to see the condition row is 2 which is less than equal to 4 and it is coming inside and executing the say, inner for loop. Now again the column value is initialized to 1 here. 
so you should understand that once the inner for loop execution has come out of it and it moves to the second iteration of the outer for loop again the column value value will be initialized to one so this uh, inner for loop is again executed for three times so what we will have is 2 1 2 2 and 2 3 once column becomes 4 it will be going out Likewise, we have four iterations according to the outer loop. So for each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop will be executed how many times in our case? It is three times. So this is how the nested for loop works. We can jump the execution of certain statements by using break and continue. So this break statement is used to terminate a loop and to transfer the control out of the loop. So for example, we have a while condition in which we are checking for condition and if it is true we are executing statement 1 and 2 then we are checking for another condition using if and if this condition is satisfied it will break and come out of this while loop so the statement 4 will not be executed because it is coming out of this while loop and statement 5 will be executed so if we are using break statement it will just come out of the loop. Suppose we, we use continue. The statement will skip the particular set of statement in the loop and it will continue the execution from the beginning of the loop. In break what happens? It will just come out of the loop and the next statements after the loop will be executed. But the continue statement will transfer the control to the beginning of the loop. So here we have a while loop in which we are checking a condition and if it's true we are entering the loop and executing statement 1 and 2. Now we are checking for condition 2. If this condition is true, we have written continue statement. What this continue will do is it will skip statement 4. It is not going to go here after this. So continue means it will again go back to the while condition and it will again check for this condition and execute the further steps. So after continue what happens, it will go back to while. Again statement 1 and 2 will be executed. Now suppose the condition is not true. What happens is it will not go inside this but it will directly come to statement 5 and 6. So what happens in the second iteration? The statement 1 will be executed, statement 2 will be executed and statement 5 will be executed. 5 and then 6. So what we did? We just skipped this statement 4. Uh, we can use continue in the situations where we need to skip certain set of statements. Thank you.